what's up guys welcome back to the minecraft hardcore series and today is actually day 365 of the world so we have played exactly one year in game time of minecraft but thank you guys for all the support on last episode we made that iron farm as you can see in the distance and super excited about that that thing is in the spawn chunk so that's probably going to be pumping out a whole lot of iron now i have a lot of plans for this episode but before we get right into things i do want to point out obviously as you could tell probably i'm not using my shaders anymore i'm not using optifine anymore i'm actually using sodium as long uh as well as some of these mods here i'm not going to go in detail too much about it but i'm using these and some uh certain resource packs but they're not really like when you hear mods nothing crazy it just kind of helps with fps in the game and quality but also like things like the sky how it looks super realistic i can just kind of do more like things like that with sodium than i can with optifine um i did download iris shaders and sodium but i can't seem to get it working i don't really know how to so hopefully i can do that and we'll get the shaders back and everything but uh, as you can tell by the title of this episode, we're definitely going to be beating the Ender Dragon and going to be making a Creeper farm. Uh, I'm kind of not sure yet if I want to make a slime farm this episode, depending on how long everything takes. But today is definitely the day that we're going to be beating Minecraft and killing the Ender Dragon and getting our Elytra, as well as turning some of those villagers into librarians, getting Unbreaking 3 and Mending for the Elytra. Now, there's a couple things we got to do before actually going to fight the Ender Dragon, which is one, go get some more Blaze Rods so we can make some uh, Eye of Enders for the End Portal. And I'm also just going to whip up some potions, but I think we have everything we need for that. So let's head right into the end and I, into the end, I got to head right into the Nether, go find the Nether Fortress and kill some Blaze. So as we go, if I have the chance, I will kind of explain some of the mods that I have. You guys already saw the sky, which is just like a more natural sky. Uh, but this one is like a gamma mod. So gamma is like brightness. I obviously just made a tunnel in my house. So right now the gamma is on minimum or default. And then if I put it on max, it just kind of brightens up the area without having to use any torches. So it's pretty useful. All right. So we found the nether fortress and I think I'm just going to get like 10 blaze rods. I think that should be enough. Alright, so I got the 10 blaze rods. I think that should be more than enough because I believe we get... Who is coming after me? I believe we get two blaze powder. Yeah, so that should be plenty of blaze rods. And let's quickly whip up some potions. All right, now that we got our potions all whipped up, I also grabbed our other two totems of undying just in case. And the last thing we're going to need for after we beat the Ender Dragon is I'm gonna get some or make some fireworks right now. That way, after we beat the Ender Dragon and get our Elytra, we don't have to walk all the way back to the end All right, these guys are just so annoying. That way, after we beat the Ender Dragon and get our Elytra, we will... I think I just saw a shooting star, but that way after we beat the Ender Dragon and get our Elytra in the End City, we'll be able to fly back and don't have to worry about running back. Alright, so I'm pretty sure that's everything we're going to need. Now all that's left to do is go find the End Portal and kill the Ender Dragon. Now before we go, right as I was leaving, I found this wandering trader who actually trades one emerald for one gunpowder. So I figured I'd just trap him. That might be pretty useful until we uh, make the, the uh, creeper farm at the end of the video. That way we don't run out of rockets. All right, so I'm just going to look up, throw my inner pearl, and let's see which direction we got to run. It looks like we're going to be heading off in this direction.
All right, we found the end portal. I'm not going to search around too much of the strongholds because I don't really care too much for it right now. Uh, right now, I'm just focused on beating this ender dragon. So let's open up the portal. And let's hop right in. All right, it looks like we spawned in the ground. Would prefer that than over the void, but let's wish me some luck. It's been a while since I have actually fought the Ender Dragon and beaten him. Last shot. All right, let's go. So we beat the Ender Dragon. <laughs> Honestly, it was a lot easier than I expected. We should get a decent amount of levels here. But it's honestly a lot easier than I expected, uh, which I guess is a good thing. So as you guys might have saw in the distance, that is the portal to the end city. So since we beat the Ender Dragon, let's get the egg and then head into the end city and get our Elytra. Alright, 
so I guess I clicked pause on OBS, but I was recording on my replay mod. So we found our first end city, but there's really not much to it. There's definitely no uh, ship with an elytra, but we might as well loot it up, see if there's a chest up top, and get some shulker shells. Alright, so there wasn't much to that in city. We only got two shulker shells, but right before I was recording, I was walking out this way and I realized I have my render distance on 20 right now. And I see that, which I believe if we get a little closer, is another end city. So hopefully this one has a ship. Uh yeah, actually it does. So let's head over there, get the elytra. We brought some rockets, so maybe we'll explore around a little bit more. Maybe get an extra elytra or just try to find some good loot. There she is, the elite. <clears throat> there she is. One of the main things in hardcore that make this game so much easier. Finally got it. And the achievement, sky's the limit. We also got two diamond swords, which aren't that great, honestly. And we got some pretty good boots here. I almost forgot about this thing over here. I'm actually gonna put this on just in case I fall. Alright, so, so far so good. We beat the Ender Dragon, found the Elytra, now we got the Dragon Head. So I'm just going to kind of explore around the end cities and see if I can just get some loot. I want to get an Ender Chest or two, some more Shulker Shells, maybe an extra Elytra, and I don't know, maybe some more Diamonds. So I'm just going to fly around, maybe use like half a stack of Fireworks. Alright, so we only came to this one end city. It was actually pretty huge. It also actually was supposed to have another elytra, but if you look closely, you'll see that the ship just got cut off after the first layer. So that's cool. We still were able to get a bunch of shulker shells. We got three ender chests, some more diamonds. Uh, we also got an armor trim, so that's pretty cool. But I'm going to head back to where we killed the ender dragon, and I'll jump through the portal with you guys, and I'll see you back home. All right, here we go. Let's jump through. All right, so we're back home. And before we do anything, we have 68 levels and we have no pants left. So let's go enchant a new pair of leggings. There we go. All right, so we put away everything we got from the end. We got our ender chest and always keep one in our inventory with our totem, some extra fireworks. And some other stuff. We also made, we're able to make eight shulker boxes, which is going to be very helpful. And then this is just some extra stuff that we got. Also, I have 31, 35 emeralds, and it looked like this guy despawned. Okay. All right, so the first step in the video is complete. We beat the Ender Dragon, got the Elytra. Now, before we make the Creeper Farm, there is something that we have to do, and that is get Mending and Unbreaking 3 on the Elytra. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to use some villagers over there, turn them into librarians, and get the books that we need. Alright, it took about 10 minutes, but we got one mending trade and one unbreaking three trade. So now we just need to trade with both of them to lock it in. Need a book for this guy, don't I? Oh, actually, no, I can just do a 
bookshelf, and some paper. Alright, let's see. So, alright, now he's one emerald and one book for the Unbreaking 3, and one emerald and one book for the Mending. Alright, we got the villagers back in their little prison, so now... Alright, so we got Mending and Unbreaking 3 on the Elytra. We also put Mending on the Pickaxe for now. Uh, mending just basically whenever we get any type of experience, those little glowing green things when we kill things or smell things, basically just repairs whatever has Mending on it. Alright, now it's time for the big project, and that is building the Creeper Farm, which is going to take a little bit of preparing. So right here is our material list, but this list is um based off of four layers of the farm and we're only going to be doing two so only going to need half of these items but there is a lot of them especially the trap doors the carpets and it's not on here but we are going to need i believe 32 cats which is going to be a little annoying so let's just kind of go down the list see what we have and what we need
So now that we have all of the material for the farm, what we need to get is 32 cats. And luckily there's a village right over by the dark forest by our house that we were chopping down. So I'm heading over there now and then we're going to tame a couple of the cats, transport them through the nether and bring them closer to where we're going to be building our farm. So instead of just flying around aimlessly trying to find the right biome, a much quicker and easier way to do it is just go on chunk base, go to the biome section at the top, type in the seed of the world, and at the bottom, type in your exact X and Z coordinates that you're in at that time in the overworld. And then once you do that, click go, and it'll just kind of show you all of the biomes that you're nearby. To make it a little bit easier, go to highlighted. For this farm specifically, we're only looking for cold biomes. Uh, so the deep dark ocean, the deep cold ocean, and the deep frozen ocean. If you use the lukewarm or the warm oceans, the snow golems in the farm will melt and it'll break your farm. So once you find just kind of a few chunks of any of the biomes that you're looking for, just kind of take down a plot of land coordinates nearby that ocean because when you're connecting the nether portals, it won't spawn above the ocean. So you just kind of find a plot of land nearby that your nether portal can actually spawn on. Now take those coordinates and put them in any nether portal calculator. And if you didn't know, every one block traveled in the nether equals eight blocks traveled in the overworld. So if you have to travel thousands and thousands of blocks away in the overworld, you only have to go three to 500 in the nether. So once you plug in your overworld coordinates, take your nether coordinates, go to those nether coordinates, put down a nether portal. And once you go through the portal, it should bring you to the overworld coordinates that you just plugged in which makes traveling a whole lot faster and transporting a couple cats a whole lot easier. So now that we have our cats near the ocean where we're going to be building our farm, we can start breeding them, which is going to take a little bit of time considering cats can only breed every five minutes and we need 32 cats. Uh, a little tip, which I should have done, but is bring these two cats out into the ocean, make a little grass platform with fences and start breeding them out there, you know, exactly where you're going to be building your creeper farm. And because then what I had to do is bring all 32 cats across the water you know about 100 or 200 blocks into the water near the creeper farm so it's just easier if you breed them actually right next to it all right so now that we have all 32 cats bred for the farm while i was waiting in between breeding sessions i was flying around the ocean to see if i could find our first ocean monument and i did find one it was actually right off the shore right over here so this will definitely come in handy sometime soon when we are ready to raid our first ocean monument also after I found this ocean monument, I came back to the shore and I got a little careless and had to pop our fourth totem right here. So now we only have one left and I'm going to have to make a totem farm as well sometime very soon. All right, so I just want to go over a few things before I start the time lapse, which are very important. And if done incorrectly or not at all, will either break the farm or affect the spawn rates. So first, your AFK area where you start the build at the bottom should be at y, uh, y positive 140. This is just to ensure that no mobs spawn down below in the caves under the water, which will affect your spawn rates up top in the build. Second, turn your render distance down to 7 like I do right now. And when you look out into the water, you should see nothing but water. And if you see any land, those are possible points that creepers could spawn, which will also affect your spawn rates. And then third, make sure you build it in a deep dark, a frozen or a cold deep ocean. If it's warm, lukewarm, or anything like that, your snow golems will melt in the farm, which will just break your farm completely. That being said, I hope you guys enjoy the time lapse. I hope you guys enjoy the build, and I'll see you when I'm done.
All right, so the farm is complete. It wasn't that bad of a build. It took me about two to three hours. So now all that's left to do is to AFK. So I'm gonna AFK for about one hour, one full hour, uh, because we are gonna need a lot of gunpowder. As you can see behind me, it's already starting to work. So I'll see you guys in about an hour. Alright, so we're done AFKing, and after only one hour of AFKing, we have half a double chest of gunpowder, plus this whole shulker box right here is basically completely full, which is 63 stacks or 4,000 gunpowder, which is absolutely awesome. And even though we just afk for one hour, I'm actually going to AFK for another two hours, because you definitely can't have enough of this stuff, and we are going to need a whole bunch of it, and then I'm going to head back home. So we're back home and I did AFK for an additional two hours. So now we have the three and a half uh, chest, double chest of gunpowder. Plus I already made a ton of fireworks. So I think we got around in total like 13,000, 14,000 gunpowder in three hours, which is pretty sweet. And I think that's going to do it for this episode. It looks like after starting to edit the video, um, it's going to be about 30 minutes long, so I'm not even going to worry about the slime farm. Also, I apologize if this video took a little bit longer than usual to get out. I have just been extra busy at work, and I also took my time more than usual editing the video, trying different things, voice overlays, and better time lapses, just overall better quality on the editing side. And moving forward, I think I am going to be switching it up. So instead of recording videos how I am recording them now, I'm going to start live streaming and I'll just record while live streaming and every like, I don't know, 100 days, 250 days, I haven't decided yet. I'll chop up all the footage and kind of just make a longer form video recap of everything we've done. Um, so I guess be on the lookout for my Twitch streams. My Twitch name is the same as my YouTube name, Ayo Danny. I think we are just past 100 followers, so that's pretty sweet. Um, that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. As always, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And until next episode, peace. Oh, also one more thing. This iron farm is going crazy.